Good morning. It's great to see everyone. Thank you very much for joining us, and welcome to Cupertino. A special welcome goes out to those joining us in Beijing and Berlin and Tokyo this morning. We are really excited to show you a few things this morning that we're really proud of. But before we dive into that, I've got some updates on some exciting things happening around the company this month in September. The iTunes Festival began earlier this month. The iTunes Festival is the perfect way for us to celebrate our passion for music with some of our favorite artists. This is the seventh year in a row we've been running the festival, and this year is the best one yet. It's 30 unforgettable nights of live performances in London. We had the most incredible lineup with global superstars and stellar emerging artists. It's really some incredible headliners. Lady Gaga opened the festival, and she performed her new full-length album before it was released. And we can't wait to see Justin Timberlake and Katy Perry and so many of the others. All of the concerts are held here in the historic Roundhouse in London. It's a beautiful, incredible, intimate place to see a concert. And despite it being the hottest ticket in London, we don't charge anything to get in. Now, as you might guess, demand for these concerts had been off the charts. 20 million people applied for tickets. <laughs> it's like an opening weekend for a product. <laughs> now, we wanted everyone to enjoy this experience. And so we're live streaming the concerts to over 100 countries. And many of these... <laughs> many of the concerts are also available on demand. Eddie's team prepared a simple and elegant app. And so fans can enjoy the concerts on their iPad or iPhone, or they can enjoy on their Mac or PC in iTunes, or you can enjoy it on Apple TV in beautiful HD quality. The enthusiasm and excitement around the festival is just incredible. And we prepared a video, and I'd love to show it for you this morning. It's a month of incredible music, and I'd really encourage you to catch a couple of the concerts. They're unbelievable. Also this month, 
we have a lot of excitement in retail. As many of you know, we've been expanding our footprint outside the United States. But this month, our attention uh, turns home. A few miles from here in Stanford Shopping Center, we've had this small 1,100 square foot store. And despite the size of it, our teams have served 5 million customers there in just nine years. And they, they've recently been serving 2,000 per day in the space. Now, this store has long been overdue for an expansion. And this weekend, we replaced it with this store. Wow. This, This store is a gorgeous pavilion design with glass on three sides and a cantilevered roof supported by the three sides of glass. It's an architectural marvel. It's absolutely stunning. It's also over eight times the size of the other store that you just saw. <laughs> now, the store consists of two rooms. In the front room, you can get your hands on all of our, all of our uh, products, so you can have a really hands-on experience. And in the other room, you have access to all of our services from the Genius Bar to personal setup to one-to-one -one training. This was the opening. It was, it, was really, it was really great, a lot of excitement. That's our new Stanford store. I would encourage you to drop by after today's event. It's really, it's really great to see. Our retail teams do an incredible job. They do retail like no one else. Now, also this month, we've been hard at work on completing iOS 7. Now, of course, iOS 7 is the latest version of the world's most advanced mobile operating system. And next month, we will ship the 700 millionth iOS device. <laughs> and since we make updates easy, and make them available to as many customers as, pop as possible, iOS 7 will quickly become the world's most popular mobile operating system. It's packed with amazing new features and a stunning new user interface. And to tell you all about it, I'd like to invite Craig up. Craig? Hey, good morning. Good morning. Uh, these are exciting times. It was just three months ago that at WWDC, we first unveiled iOS 7, and we couldn't be more thrilled with the response. And now soon, we're going to witness an event really almost unprecedented in our industry, when virtually overnight, hundreds of millions of people download iOS 7 and begin a fantastic new experience with their devices. Let's take a look at what they have in store. It starts with the lock screen. It's so gorgeous with its edge-to-edge -edge design and precise typography. And when you swipe into the home screen, you get these gorgeous animations as these icons come in with their harmonious layout, their precisely chosen color palette. But iOS 7 is so alive with depth, and not through artificial shadows or borders, but the way the device responds to the motion of your hand with a parallax effect. And this deep layering is conveyed across every experience of the device. So as you swipe up from the bottom of the display, and you bring up Control Center, you see that layer, a semi-transparent layer, with these handy controls. So you can turn on airplane mode, access your music, even turn on a flashlight. This extends as well to experiences like Notification Center. You can pull down from the top, and now from anywhere, including the lock screen, and it's incredibly handy. You can find out where you next need to go. And because in iOS 7, your device actually learns when and where you commute, it can recommend where you need to go and how long it will take you to get there with current traffic conditions. It's totally handy. Now, we've also made search more convenient than ever before in iOS 7. From any screen on your home screen, you can pull down and search for whatever it is you're looking for and find it just like that. <laughs> now, the experience and iOS extends throughout all the applications. A great example is the uh, weather app. You see the edge-to-edge -edge design, the precise typography, the subtle animations. 
And if you double click on the home button, you're taken into multitasking where all your apps are kept up to date. You can just tap, like for instance on Safari, and bring an app forward. And Safari in iOS 7 is fantastic. We have the new tab view, just tap in the lower right of the screen, you get an overview of all your tabs. Pick a tab, it slides forward. Start browsing, and the controls just elegantly fade away, letting you focus on your content. Now, Siri is massively improved in iOS 7. Just hold down on your home button, go into Siri. You can say things like, what's Lady Gaga saying? Searching on Twitter. OK, here are some tweets. So you see that Siri can now draw on the latest tweets, but you also notice that great new high quality female voice. You can also select between a new high quality male voice as well. Okay, here are some tweets. And in addition to Twitter, Siri can now draw on information from Wikipedia, inline web search, and great photo search as well. Now the voices aren't the only place where the sound in iOS 7 is improved. When you receive a call, you may hear something like this. Or this. Or this. Now you may miss a call due to your dancing, but <laughs> it's, it's okay, we still have voicemail, so it's, it's all good. And we've improved the system alert sounds as well. You have lots of options like this, or this. <laughs> Or my favorite, <laughs> it's kind of cool. In addition to these and many others, we have all the old classics as well, but remastered to sound better than ever before. Now, of course, one of the most important things we do with our phones is capture memories. We do that with the camera app. And in iOS 7, the camera is better than ever. You can easily swipe between your different cameras, like your video camera, a new square aspect ratio camera, you can tap in the lower right and get access to live photo effects. You can apply them right while shooting or after the fact when you edit. But what I really love with photos in iOS 7 is the way instead of a flat camera roll, I can actually get my photos automatically grouped by moments based on the location and time when they were taken. And if I want to zoom back, those moments are collected into related collections. For instance, an entire vacation automatically pulled together into a single collection. And I can pull even further back into the year view. It's just stunning. I get to see my entire year as a wall of color. And what's really awesome is that the, on a retina display, you can actually make out different parts of your photo collection, and you can just hold down your finger and scrub and find a particular photo and bring it forward. And of course, when you find a great photo, you're going to want to share it, and sharing in iOS 7 is easier than ever. Tap in the lower left, bring up the share sheet. Across the top, you can select additional photos to share. You, of course, can share across messages, email, iCloud photo sharing. But if you want to share with people right around you, there's nothing better than AirDrop. For anyone who has their phone on nearby, they'll appear in AirDrop. You can just tap, tap on each person you want to share with, and via high-speed P2P Wi-Fi, you're securely sharing. It's absolutely phenomenal. Now, of course, at Apple, we really love music. And in iOS 7, the music app is absolutely the best way to enjoy your own personal music collection. But now in iOS 7, we also have iTunes Radio. It's the best way to experience new music. Now, this is as easy as tapping across the top on one of the featured stations. And you can also, of course, create your own stations. Just tap on the new station button, and you're prompted with a set of genres to browse. But what's really great is you can really create a station that expresses your own taste. So if you're like me, you're going to tap on the search field and type R-U-S-H for the awesome Canadian rock trio Rush, <laughs> and get a thorough dose of awesome right on your featured stations <laughs> list. Absolutely. Thank God they dropped the audio on that, or there'd be a career-ending bout of air guitar up here. So anyway, so that's music. Now, iOS 7, of course, is more than I can show you right here. There are over 200 features. And it doesn't stop there, because our developer community has been hugely inspired by iOS 7. And we're seeing great new designs coming in for apps like OpenTable, Evernote, 
Zillow, NBC, and so many more. You'll see many more coming in the App Store and in the time to come. So uh, downloading iOS 7 is like getting an all new device, one that's so much more useful and elegant than you ever before, but one you already know how to use. And it's great not just on the iPhone, but on the iPad as well, where iOS 7 takes great advantage of the expanded iPad canvas. As always, iOS 7 will be available unbelievably for free starting on September 18th. It's available for iPhone 4 and later, the iPad 2 and later, the iPad mini, and the fifth generation iPod Touch. That's iOS 7. Thank you very much. Thanks, Charlie. This has been an incredible effort. I can't stress that enough. And it is only possible because of the incredible collaboration between Johnny and his amazing design team and Craig and his incredible engineering team. We think our customers are absolutely going to love it. Now I'd like to switch gears and talk about some other software that we create. As you know, I work with design to take advantage of the power of the iPhone and the iPad and to bring that power right to your fingertips. And what you may not know is that iWork now consists of the best-selling mobile productivity apps on any platform. Now, iWork has three amazing apps. The first is Keynote. Keynote is the most powerful presentation app ever designed for a mobile device and allows you to create and deliver world-class presentations on your iPad or iPhone. And Pages, the most beautiful spreadsheet ever written for a mobile device, allows you to create, edit, and view documents from anywhere. And Numbers, Numbers is the best spreadsheet ever designed for a mobile device and allows you to make compelling spreadsheets in just minutes. Now, iWork highlights the fact that iOS devices aren't just great for consuming content. They're incredible for creating content. We also make some incredible creativity apps, apps like iPhoto. iPhoto brings powerful photographic tools right to your fingertips so you can take your photo editing to the next level. And apps like iMovie, so you can make beautiful, full HD movies from Hollywood trailers to more sophisticated projects right on your iPhone or iPad. Now, we think that iWork is a really key advantage for a customer's productivity and that iPhoto and iMovie are great for our customer's creativity. No other platform has any apps like these. We think that all iOS devices are made even better if they have these apps. And almost all of our customers want these apps. So today, we're announcing that we're making all five of these industry-leading apps free. They're free with any new iOS device. We think that our customers are going to believe this is incredible. It'll be great for their productivity and creativity. So when you're setting up your new iOS device, iOS 7 will present you with this screen. And with one touch, boom, all five of these apps are downloaded for you and, and some additional ones. We think our customers are going to love this. This is for any new iPad or for any new iPhone or fifth generation iPod Touch. We think this will be great for our customers. We look forward to doing it. Now I'd like to talk about iPhone. A couple of you may have been expecting this. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> About a year ago, we announced iPhone 5. iPhone 5 was instantly the most loved iPhone ever. And it had the most successful first year of any iPhone we've ever done. Customers loved the retina display. They loved the thin and beautiful design, the super fast processing and graphics, the incredible camera. And iPhone 5 helped take our iPhone business to an entirely different level, becoming very huge. Now, in the past, when we've announced a new iPhone, we've lowered the price of the current iPhone, making it even more accessible to more people. But this year, we're not going to do that. The business has become so large that this year, we're going to replace the iPhone 5. And we're going to replace it with not one, but two new designs. This allows us to serve even more customers. And to tell you all about these two new incredible designs, I'd like to invite Phil Schiller up. Phil? Good morning, everyone. I'm really happy to be here because I have the great honor and privilege to introduce these two new iPhone products to you. And the first one is called iPhone 5C. The iPhone 5C is made with all the incredible technology the customers have loved with the iPhone 5. And there's more, too. It has an incredible all-new design, one that's more fun, more colorful than any iPhone we've made yet. A few of you might have seen some shots on the web. You've seen it. <laughs> and that's cool, because everyone's really excited about this. And so are we. But you haven't really seen it before. Not like this. iPhone 5C. And it's really stunning. An incredible new color design. It delivers on color throughout the product. Every detail. The volume buttons. The switches. The entire back and sides are made from a single part. And the front is one glass multi-touch surface. As close as you look, you won't see seams or part lines or joins. It's absolutely gorgeous. And when you turn it on for the very first time and iOS 7 runs on the new iPhone 5C, you'll see how incredible they look together. The vibrant icons, the color matched wallpaper, the way the translucency brings color to the surface and it creates an entire experience of color. And the experience just doesn't stop with the phone design and the software. The team has created a really cool line of custom cases specifically for the iPhone 5C. They're made of a soft feel, silicon rubber. They're microfiber lined. And they've designed areas like around the camera and flash where the color of the iPhone shines through. In fact, as we look down, you're going to see these cool circular cutout patterns. So you get this amazing combination of color between the iPhone 5C and its case. And you can combine them in really amazing combinations to create the exact look that you love. It's absolutely beautiful. And when you pick up and hold the iPhone 5C for the first time, you're going to be blown away about the quality of it and how rigid and great it feels in your hand. It's made of a hard-coated polycarbonate material that's ideal for this incredible color. But it's more. Inside, it's built with a new construction method 
that uses a steel reinforced structure. It provides incredible rigidity. It also serves a dual purpose as part of the antenna system. So it's really smart. It surrounds a beautiful four inch retina display with integrated touch layers so the colors feel like they're right sitting there on top of the glass. It has gorgeous range of colors and is awesome for your photos and your videos. Inside, it's powered by an Apple designed A6 chip that gives great performance and great battery life. In fact, the battery inside the iPhone 5C is slightly larger than the battery was in the iPhone 5 before it. It has the world's most popular camera, the 8 megapixel EyeSight camera with its backside illuminated sensor, five element lens, hybrid IR filter, it takes great photos. And it uses that new camera app that Craig told you about that has all these great features as well as these live uh, inline photo filters while you're taking your photos and zoom while you're shooting your video. On the front side, it's got a brand new FaceTime HD camera that's even better in low light scenarios. It's got bigger pixels, better backside illumination. And it works with this new FaceTime audio feature. In iOS 7, you can make calls that are crystal clear using FaceTime. The iPhone 5C supports more network bands than any phone we've made yet. In fact, it supports more LTE bands than any other smartphone in the world. It has download speeds up to 100 megabit per second down, has dual band Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.0. It runs iOS 7. And running the apps in iOS 7 on this beautiful color design is just an amazingly great experience. So this is iPhone 5C. It comes in five colors, blue, white, pink, yellow, and green. It starts with a large 16 gigabyte configuration at a price of just $99. As you can see, 32 gigabytes for $199 is on a typical US carrier two year contract. These gorgeous cases, there are six colors to choose from, are just $29 each. We think customers will get more than one and change the look of their iPhone whenever they feel like it. We work really hard to make sure these products are designed in the most environmentally friendly manner. They're arsenic free display glass, mercury free displays, BFR free, PVC free. Yes, an Android free. <laughs> this, this is the iPhone 5C. We have a video to tell our customers a lot more about it. The iPhone 5C is in many ways the distillation of what people love about the iPhone 5. It's simpler, more essential, yet it's more capable and certainly more colorful. We believe the iPhone is an experience, an experience that's defined by hardware and software working harmoniously together. We continue to refine that experience, dramatically blurring the boundaries between the two, making it more powerful, more intuitive, and ultimately more useful. iPhone 5C is beautifully, unapologetically plastic. Multiple parts have been reduced to a single polycarbonate component whose surface is continuous and seamless. I think that designs with a real coherence are the result of developing form, material and color in unison, each element informing and in many ways defining the other, creating a significant and a meaningful design. Just as with its appearance, we took the same fanatical care with how the iPhone 5C feels in your hand. That sense of quality and integrity that's synonymous with the iPhone. That meant developing the design by creating a whole new structural architecture. It starts with a single piece of polycarbonate into which we install a steel reinforced frame, creating a bespoke assembly that doubles as an antenna. We then add the rear plate. We then machine holes for the buttons, ensuring perfect alignment. 
and then the entire assembly goes through multiple finishing processes, including a clear lacquer hard coat that creates a durable and incredibly glossy surface. This whole process culminates in an extraordinarily rigid structure and a solid, dense feel that you would not expect from a plastic product. From the beginning, we wanted to design cases as colorful and as well made as the iPhone itself. The soft, matte, microfiber lined silicon is a very intentional contrast to the glossy, hard coat finish of the iPhone. The result is a case that extends and complements the product while offering dozens of colorful combinations. iPhone 5C is built on a foundation of features that people know and love. Like the beautiful 4-inch Retina display, blazing fast performance and console-level graphics from the A6 chip, the 8-megapixel EyeSight camera, and an impressive battery life. And now, we've added more LTE bands than any other smartphone in the world. And we've given it a new FaceTime HD camera for even better FaceTime calls and self-portraits. Beyond that, it comes with iOS 7, which includes new features like Control Center, AirDrop, and iTunes Radio. Combined with a ton of other great features, iOS 7 creates an experience that's even simpler, more useful, and more enjoyable iOS 7 is designed to complement the iPhone 5C beautifully. The wallpapers are color matched to the exterior, and the translucency inherent in iOS 7 carries this color through everything you do. This is just another great example of how we design and engineer our products in concert. It really is the only way that we believe provides the right experience. I think it's quite remarkable when something feels familiar and yet it's new at the same time. That's the iPhone 5C. It's the vivid realization of hardware and software together in one device. So that is iPhone 5C, the first of our two new phone lines today. The second, the second is called iPhone 5S. The 5S is the most forward-thinking phone we've ever created. In fact, perhaps the most forward-thinking phone anyone has ever made. It's packed with incredible technologies, technologies that are in service of helping people use these devices more in the ways that we all want to. And it's built in a design that is absolutely the most beautiful, stunning phone design in the industry. And this is what it looks like. This is iPhone 5S. It is made of a high-grade aluminum with diamond-cut chamfered edges, perfectly matched glass inlays. The team has carefully considered every detail to make this the most beautiful phone ever made, and it is the gold standard in smartphones. It comes in three metal finishes, silver, gold, and a new space gray. And there are so many innovations inside it. I'm going to tell you about three major ones today. The first is performance. We all want great performance in our devices. And it's even hard to remember the old days where performance meant big processing cards and graphic cards and power supplies and fans. That defined computing performance. But thank goodness we've moved beyond that. Now customers want great performance that fits in the palm of your hands and you can take with you 
everywhere. And the iPhone 5S is a huge leap forward in mobile computing performance. It starts with a brand new system on a chip from Apple called A7. A7 is 64-bit. This is the first ever in a phone of any kind. I don't think the other guys are even talking about it yet. <laughs> now, the PC world went through a transition from 32-bit to 64-bit, and it took years. Today, you're going to see that Apple is going to move the, move the system forward, the mobile computing system, from 32 to 64-bit in one day. We're going to do it by great new hardware, amazing operating system advancements, and all new applications. So let's talk about the hardware. The A7 chip, this is remarkable. It is a 64-bit desktop class architecture. That means we can use a new modern instruction set, an ARM instruction set that's more efficient than the others use. It has a lot of great technology in it. The number that just stands out above all else, it has over a billion transistors in it. And this fits in a die that's about the same size as the previous generation A6. It's about twice as many transistors. It's remarkable. Now, you've heard a lot about iOS 7, but what we haven't told you yet is it's also been completely re-engineered for 64-bit at the same time. It has 64-bit kernel, libraries, and drivers. And all the apps that come with your iPhone 5S, they've been re-engineered to 64-bit as well. And this will be an easy transition for developers as we've updated our tools with Xcode to support 64-bit so they can make 32 and 64-bit apps easily. And this is seamless for customers because it's completely backwards compatible with all your existing 32-bit applications. It runs the 32 and 64-bit applications side by side transparently. You don't have to worry a thing about it. Why go through all this? Because the benefits are huge. The A7 is up to twice as fast as a previous generation system at CPU tasks. And it's up to twice as fast at graphics tasks as well. And the jump forward in, in performance by our team here is incredible at fun making this chart. CPU performance from the first iPhone to now the new iPhone 5S. It's increased 40 times. <laughs> What's striking looking at this chart is half of that performance comes today with the iPhone 5S. And it's even more with graphics. It's increased 56 times since the original iPhone. Again, half of that coming today with the new iPhone 5S. It runs OpenGL ES version 3.0, the latest graphics standard. This means that graphic intense applications can bring their console and desktop level 64-bit graphics easily to the iPhone platform. And this will enable breakthroughs in performance for graphic intense games and things that we love to play and use all day long on our iPhones. Now that sounds great, but what's really amazing is when you see it for the first time. And so we're super excited to invite up from Epic Games, Donald Mustard, co-founder, Chair Entertainment. Donald. Please come. Welcome. Good morning. I can hardly believe that it's been three years since we first introduced the world to Infinity Blade. With touch gameplay designed from the ground up for these amazing Apple devices, Infinity Blade 1 and 2 have delighted tens of millions of players and won countless awards. Today, my brother Jeremy and I are thrilled to unveil the epic conclusion to the Infinity Blade trilogy. And we're going to show you something that's never been seen before on a mobile device. Until now. We begin our journey in the hideout, which serves as a hub for players to access any of the eight new worlds in Infinity Blade 3. Let's take a look at a few of those worlds now. Now, in Infinity Blade 3, you will play as two characters. This is Issa, a stealthy warrior thief. Each of these environments is huge, extremely detailed, and filled with rich and rewarding gameplay. And each of these areas is as big or bigger than the entirety of the first Infinity Blade. Now this is all running real time, with each of these complex environments being loaded almost instantly. That's over five times faster than on an iPhone 5. Now watch, we'll literally just fade to black, unload this, and boom, load in an entirely new world, just like that. 
The 64-bit architecture of the new A7 chip is so efficient, I literally did a double take the first time I saw how fast it loaded. Now, typically converting software to 64-bit is a lengthy, painstaking process. But with Apple's excellent tools, it took you how long, Jeremy? Two hours. Two hours, by himself. <laughs> Now Cyrus and Issa have joined forces to take down the Deathless and the Worker of Secrets. With OpenGL ES 3.0, we can now combine advanced rendering effects that you've only before seen in film. Things like depth of field and blur and full screen vignettes. We can even now add lens flares that would make J.J. Abrams proud. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and his armor even reflects the environment. So Infinity Blade is known for its big, epic boss battles. But we wanted to do something bigger. Something that would even make this troll afraid for its life. Now this new boss eats the old boss for lunch. <laughs> Now, remember, this, this is running real time. This, this is absolutely not a movie. Jeremy is fighting this dragon right now on the iPhone 5S. OK, so when we first got our hands on the new iPhone, I was blown away by how much we could throw at it. We literally just kept turning on feature after feature, and still there was power to spare. For example, we were able to add four times the detail to this dragon. I, mean, I want you to notice the rows of razor sharp teeth and the, the ridges of spony, bony spine up its back. I really think that this represents a sea change for our industry. All right, Jeremy, let's see if you have what it takes to slay the dragon. Infinity Blade 3 will yet again completely redefine the boundaries of mobile gaming. And it's only possible because of the power of the new iPhone. Now, best of all, we've just finished putting the final touches on Infinity Blade 3. And it will be available in the App Store alongside the new iPhone 5S. Thank you. I hope you're blown away, I am. That is a level of graphics and performance you have never before seen on a mobile device. It's due to this incredible new software running on this amazing A7 chip. But that's not the end of the story in the architecture, there's more to it. We have a completely new part in the iPhone, we call it M7. It works alongside A7. It is a motion coprocessor. So what does that do? Well. It takes advantage of all these great sensors and it continually measures the data coming from them without even having to wake up the A7 chip. It measures from the accelerometer, the gyroscope, and the compass. And with new software and applications, you're going to get a whole new level of health and fitness solutions never before possible on a mobile phone. We're updating our core motion API inside iOS 7 to read this data and provide it to applications. And it can characterize and analyze the data to tell applications whether you're stationary, walking, running, driving, and provide that to enable you to take applications to help you make life more fit and healthy. And we've been working with developers to do this. And they're doing some amazing work. I'd like to tell you about one of them, Nike. The great team at Nike is creating a new application called Nike Plus Move. It's all about helping athletes stay motivated to be fit and active throughout their day. It uses the new M7 chip and core motion API as well as GPS to help keep track of the kind of activities you're taking part in throughout the day and where you're doing it. 
It gives you Nike fuel points and lets you compete with friends over Game Center, all in service of have, having you have a more healthy and active lifestyle throughout your day. It's really cool. So A7, M7, a lot more performance, a lot more graphics, motion data. What about battery life? Well, we're really happy to tell you the team has done a phenomenal job. They deliver battery life that's equal or greater than the iPhone 5 had. 10 hours 3G talk time, 8 hours 3G browsing, 10 hours LTE browsing, Wi-Fi browsing, video playback, 40 hours of music listening, up to 250 hours of standby. So that's the first of our breakthrough new technologies in the iPhone 5S, a 64-bit class architecture and incredible performance of A7 and M7. Second, the camera system. People love taking photos with their iPhones and its iSight camera, and it does a phenomenal job. And we want it to get smarter and better at helping us take phenomenal pictures. It used to be the way you take better pictures is you learn to be a better photographer. You get bigger cameras, bigger lenses, you learn about all the techniques of light meters and gels and filters, and you can spend your lifetime studying how to take advantage of this and make it work for you. And for the people who want to do that, that's great. But for most of us, we just want to take a picture and have the iPhone take a better picture for us. And we have some huge advancements in technology with iPhone 5S to do just that. First, it starts with the hardware, a new camera system. We have a new five-element Apple-designed lens that has a larger f2.2 aperture, lets more light onto the sensor. We have a new sensor as well that has a 15% larger active area. Now, our competitors would just pack more pixels on that, make them ever smaller and cram them closer together to get some stat on a spec sheet. That's not what we do. We know a secret. We know it's actually bigger pixels that make a better picture. And the pixels on this sensor are 1.5 microns in size, larger than the iPhone 5, and much larger than most competitive phones. They often have 1.0 or 1.1 micron size pixels. But with a bigger pixel, you let in more light, get a better dynamic range of color, and less noise in the image, all to make a better photograph. The new software in iOS 7 has been designed to take advantage of this new sensor, as well as the image the image capabilities of the A7 chip, which are remarkable. So let me give you an example of some of the things this new camera app is doing automatically for you. When you launch the camera app, before you even take a picture, it's automatically setting white balance, getting the right colors for you. It's automatically setting the exposure level to get the right brightness level. For the first time, it's creating a dynamic local tone map around the image so it can get better highlights and shadows in the image. For the first time, it's doing autofocus matrix metering with 15 focus zones. This is DSLR level stuff to get a sharper image. And then when you do take a picture, unbeknownst to you, it actually takes multiple photos. It instantly analyzes them in real time for which is the sharpest, and that's what you see on your screen. It is completely automatic and much smarter and more capable than ever before. And it doesn't stop with that. It has a new flash as well. We call it the True Tone Flash. When you take a flash picture, I'm sure many of you know that the ambient light, whether you're outside or in a room, varies in its color temperature. For example, a fluorescent light is cooler or bluer, an incandescent light is warmer or more amber. Whatever color your flash is, it's going to clash with the color of the lighting in the room and give you a photo that doesn't look quite right, especially skin tones because skin is so reflective. Well, the flash and the iPhone 5S solves for this. It actually has two LEDs, one a cooler white one and another a warmer amber one. And in real time, it analyzes the scene and can present a color flash of over a thousand color variations to give exactly the right color flash for the room or, or situation you're in. This is the first time it has ever been done, not just on a phone, but a camera of any kind. It's truly a breakthrough. So before, using a, a phone that has a camera with a single LED, you might get a photo like this. You see it has a warm uh, uh, incandescent light. The skin tones don't look right at all. The wood table looks too orange. The jeans are too blue and not right. That's really hard to fix later with editing. 
And this is an unretouched photo right off the iPhone 5S in the same scene. You see much more natural skin tones. The wood table looks great. So that's one of the great new features in the camera system. Here's another for the first time in the iPhone auto image stabilization. We've all run into situations like this. In a room, maybe a little bit less ambient light, the subject is moving, it needs a long exposure to get a picture, but that means you're gonna blur in your photo. So this isn't a keeper, you gotta get rid of this photo. But in the iPhone 5S, you get a much sharper image in the same situation. What is it doing? It actually, with a single press of the shutter, takes multiple photos and is able to combine them for the right exposure level, but select the parts of the image that could be sharpest on that short exposure time, all done instantly in real time. Here's another great feature of this camera system, a fun new burst mode. When you go to take your picture, if you hold down on the shutter button, it'll burst a bunch of photos. It can actually take 10 frames a second for as long as you hold your finger on the shutter. So it can work like this. So in two seconds, we just took 20 photos of that scene. Now this is great for action shots, or maybe you're just taking a still of some kids that are fidgeting and moving around. Now, if every time you did this, you had to go into your camera roll and sort through all those photos, well, the fun would be lost. But the team has done a brilliant job. Using the A7 chip, in real time, as you took those photos, it analyzed them for a number of variables. It checks on exposure, sharpness, whether there are faces in the scene, whether they're smiling, whether they're blinking. And when you go into the camera roll, it presents what it thinks might be your favorite shot out of all the shots. You don't have to select them. You can go inside and select any of the other ones you want. They're all there, but it picks the best one. If it notices a shot like this one that was an action sequence, it'll pick a couple shots to represent the major motions in the action, so you have a few photos from that whole series, all done in real time automatically. <laughs> one more great camera feature I want to tell you about, slow-mo. So we have a video camera you can select in the camera app. We have a second one called a slow motion camera. You select that one, and then you can create scenes with slow motion, like this. <laughs> if the iPhone 5S does in that situation, it's ca capturing HD video at 720p at 120 frames a second. Now normal video is 30 frames a second, and you can go in and select right on the screen what part you want to be normal speed, what you want to be slow motion, and instantly create it, yet it looks completely natural and there's no loss of quality as you move in and out of normal and slow speed. And then you just share it with your family and friends. Now all of these great features and technologies are simply in service of taking a beautiful picture. So we have a few photos I'd like to walk through here and show you that are all taken right off an iPhone 5S, not edited, retouched in any way. So here are some examples. Just a beautiful macro shot. You see a great dynamic range of color in this image. A still shot, you see great sharpness. The camera takes such sharp images now. With its better low light capabilities, you can get photos in all different situations that come out even more beautiful. Like this jellyfish taken into aquarium. Now on a previous product, we showed some photos and everybody had their favorite, which was of a, a creature. So we talked to his agent and asked him to come back in another shot for us. <laughs> he was kind enough to sit for another shooting. This is a California ground squirrel or Spermophilia beachy, if you don't know it. And the sharpness and detail is amazing. We captured another great, great creature. This is a young homo sapien at a rare moment of rest. <laughs> Now, again, this is right off the iPhone 5S camera. Beautiful skin tones, rich, deep browns. It's a gorgeous photo. This one's gorgeous, too. A sunset shot, incredible white balance, just beautiful glowing tones. And even the great panorama shots we can take are even better with the iPhone 5S. This is 28 megapixel panorama taken with the 5S. And what makes it even better now is we can adjust the exposure level automatically as you're panning the scene. So for example, this scene is more sunlight on the right-hand side than the left of the sky. The exposure was adjusted automatically as we pan the scene. 
So that is the new iSight camera in the iPhone 5S. Woo! The third, the third feature is all about security. Now we have so much personal information on our devices that we want to protect. I miss the old days when documents were actually paper and you could lock them up in places and protect them. But we know that's not the world we live in anymore. We have so much of our personal life on these devices, our contacts, our emails, access to our accounts, our photos, and they're with us everywhere we go. So we have to protect them. The most common way, of course, is to set up a passcode. Simple four-digit passcode or more complex one if you want. This is something you do dozens of times a day to unlock and get access to your phone. Unfortunately, some people find that's too cumbersome and they don't set it up. In fact, in our research, about half of smartphone customers do not set up a passcode on their device. And they really, really should. That's why the team has worked so hard on a brand new technology to make this easy and fun to do. And it's called Touch ID. Touch ID uses a key you have with you everywhere you go. Your finger. And more specifically, your fingerprint, which is unique to each of us. It reads your fingerprint at an incredibly detailed level. And that's because of a brand new sensor called the Touch ID sensor. It's a touch capacitive sensor. It's super thin, 170 microns thin. It's just thicker than a human hair. Yet it's very high resolution, 500 pixels per inch. It scans through the outer layers of your epidermis right to the inner live layers to get a better image of your actual fingerprint. You can teach it about more than one finger if you want, maybe use it right-handed and left-handed. And no matter what, what orientation you use to train it, you can turn your finger and don't have to worry about it because you can read it in any orientation. But probably one of the most brilliant things the team did was where they put this new sensor, right into the home button that we use all day long. This is really smart. The home button still has a tactile switch just like before, so it works the way you're used to. But it also now includes the Touch ID sensor. Around it is the stainless steel detection ring. So the sensor knows when to read your fingerprint just by the fact that your finger's on the button. You don't even have to click it. On top of it, it's protected with a sapphire lens. It's hard, and it also provides a better image down on the Touch ID sensor. Now, Touch ID has been built deeply into iOS 7. And the team has made it really fun and easy for you to teach your iPhone 5S about your fingerprint. And once you do, you can simply touch the home button to unlock your phone. And it's something that's a joy to do all day, every day, and leave on always. And since it's built in, the team's also figured out how to use it to make iTunes purchases, which of course has a different passcode, but you can just use your same finger to authenticate music, applications, books, TV shows, and movies, all with just a touch of your finger. So. It wouldn't be a killer Apple technology without a great video to tell us all about it. iPhone 5S is our most refined iPhone to date. It is meticulously designed, engineered, and crafted. But it's the remarkable innovation inside the iPhone 5S that sets a new precedent. It's not just rampant technology for technology's sake. Every single component, every process has been considered and measured to make sure that it's truly useful and that it actually enhances the user's experience. This care, this consideration extends to how we protect all of the important information that you actually carry with you on your iPhone. It's what led us to create Touch ID. Your fingerprint is one of the best passwords in the world. It's always with you and no two are exactly alike. So it made perfect sense to create a simple, seamless way to use it as a password. With just a touch of your home button, the Touch ID sensor quickly reads your fingerprint and automatically unlocks your phone. You can even use it to authorize purchases through our stores for music, movies, TV shows, apps, and books. Setting up Touch ID to recognize your fingerprint is easy, and every time you use it, it gets better at reading your print. 
It can read multiple fingerprints and read them in any orientation. The technology within Touch ID is some of the most advanced hardware and software we put in any device. The button itself is made from sapphire crystal, one of the clearest, hardest materials available. This protects the sensor and acts as a lens to precisely focus it on your finger. The steel ring surrounding the button detects your finger and tells Touch ID to start reading your print. The sensor uses advanced capacitive touch to take, in essence, a high resolution image of your fingerprint from the sub-epidermal layers of your skin. It then intelligently analyzes this information with a remarkable degree of detail and precision. It categorizes your print by one of three basic types, arch, loop, or whorl. It maps individual details in the ridges that are smaller than the human eye can see, and even inspects minor variations in ridge direction caused by pores and edge structures. Touch ID uses all this to provide the most accurate match and a very high level of security. All fingerprint information is encrypted and stored inside the secure enclave in our new A7 chip. Here, it is locked away from everything else, accessible only by the Touch ID sensor. It's never available to other software, and it's never stored on Apple servers or backed up to iCloud. Touch ID defines the next step of how you use your iPhone. Making something as important as security so effortless and so simple. We believe that technology is at its very best, at its most empowering, when it simply disappears. So that is Touch ID, the third of our forward-thinking technologies in the iPhone 5S. It has the new A7 chip with its 64-bit desktop class architecture, the all-new iSight camera system with its True Tone flash, and dozens of new features that make picture taking better and easier than ever, and Touch ID, deep integration, security features based around your fingerprint. Throughout this, you've heard about iOS 7 in ways that you haven't heard before. In addition to all the great user experience and great features, now you know that iOS 7 has also been created to fully support iPhone 5S with a 64-bit architecture and integration of Touch ID at a deep level of the system and all that camera capability with the image processing in the A7 chip. This is our most forward-thinking phone yet. Is the iPhone 5S, again in silver, gold, and space gray. It starts with a 16-gigabyte configuration at just 199. 32 gigabytes at 299, the massive 64 gigabytes at 399 again on a standard two-year contract. In addition to that, the team has made a set of cases that fit the character of this phone so well. They're leather cases, dyed in these five gorgeous colors, just $39 each, and there's also a beautiful product red one as well. It's really great. Like all of our products, it's really important that we design iPhone 5S to be environmentally friendly. Others don't talk about this, but we're going to continue to because it matters so much. Arsenic-free display glass, mercury-free display, BFR-free, PVC-free, and highly recyclable with its high-grade aluminum and glass. So now you've seen our two new phone lines, iPhone 5C and iPhone 5S. The 5C in these gorgeous new colors, 5S, these beautiful metal finishes and packed with these forward-thinking technologies. The 5C starts at just $99, the 5S at 199. We're also going to keep a model of the iPhone 4S, an 8 gigabyte configuration in the line. Many carriers will be offering that for free with their two-year contracts. So this is the first time we're launching and rolling out two new lines of iPhone. So how are we going to do that? Well, starting on Friday, September 13th, that's this Friday, you'll be able to order the iPhone 5C, pre-order it online. Then a week later, September 20th, you'll start to be able to purchase both the iPhone 5C and the iPhone 5S in channels. In the United States, Australia, Canada, China, France, Germany, Japan, Singapore, and the United Kingdom. This is the first time we've been able to launch an iPhone at the start of the other countries in China. And we are so proud of the work that the team has done here in the US and in China to make that possible. It's really great. <laughs> a 
And in Japan, we're going to launch with our great friends at SoftBank and KDDI, and also for the first time with NTT Docomo. <laughs> By the end of the year, we're going to work hard to bring it out into 100 countries and over 270 carrier partners around the world. So that's iPhone. Let me turn it back to Tim. Thanks, Phil. These iPhones are packed with remarkable technologies, but we've done that in a way that really matters to people, making things easier and better for our users. We don't just pack in feature after feature. Instead, we think deeply about what kind of experience we want to create and then create technologies that enable that experience. It's really an amazing set of products. iOS 7, the biggest change to iOS since the original iPhone. iPhone 5C, an advancement of iPhone 5 with an entirely new design that feels great in your hand and color done in a way that only Apple could do. iPhone 5S, the most advanced iPhone ever with our most forward-thinking technologies. Now, we prepared a few ads because we're so excited about the new iPhones and iOS. And I've selected one this morning, and I'd like to play it for you. Hey! Hey, ça va? Hi, Patsy. Guten Morgen! This is the captain. Ah, meravai, meravai, meravai. This is I think it is. Okay, it's got to be really fast. I've got one second. Hey, guess who? Oh, Eduardo Lucas. Jumbo. Get I come back. Dude. Oh my God, no. Yep, yep. This is Dr. Flamenco. <laughs> Mr. Mojito. Oh, look what the cat dragged in. Let me talk. Por favor, stop calling me. Oh, my mind. How are you looking? <laughs> Mama, namaste. No way. Why? Ciao, Nini. Bye, Sue. Wrong number? Salam. <laughs> what? Isn't that cool? We hope that you love these new products as much as we've loved creating them. I'd like to thank all the teams at Apple that have worked so hard on creating these products. I am so incredibly proud over their work. Now, before we close this morning, I'd like to return to music for a moment. You've heard us say many times that music is deeply embedded in our DNA. And you've seen us talk about iTunes Festival to iTunes Radio today. We do really love music. And we love celebrating with great artists. Sometimes in the past, we've invited a musical guest to help remind us just how much we do love music. We have invited a guest this morning, and he has gone through great lengths to make it here. His body of work spans three decades and 29 albums. He is widely viewed to be one of the best singer-songwriters of our time, and his voice is just unmistakable. He's a Grammy Award winner, and he's an inductee into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Please join me in welcoming our friend, Elvis Costello. How are y'all doing? Wow, that's a lot of fancy stuff that 
I feel I feel underdressed. I got just on my old Fender guitar up here. Oh, sorry, can I say Fender in here? I don't know. Here's a song that was written by my good friend Nick Lowe. As I walk this wicked world, searching for light of the darkness, I'm tempted. Oh yeah, and ask myself, is all hope lost? Is there only pain in hatred? And each time I feel like this inside There's one thing I want to know What's so funny about peace, love, and understanding oh, What's so funny about peace, love, and understanding originally wrote that song for a, for a prank to make fun of uh, all the love and peace kind of songs of the 1960s, but as time goes on, it seems to be more poignant uh, to sing that song. Um, when I left school, the first time, uh, the first job I did was uh, I was a computer operator, and looking at uh, all of the magic and, and wonders of today, I'm beginning to think I went into the wrong business, you know? <laughs> uh, I was uh, I was fortunate enough to to keep fit by running up and down uh, in, a, in, a, in a computer center that was as big as a football field. And uh, probably everything that that computer could do, uh, just one little piece of your new iPhone can do now, I think. It's like. But uh, <clears throat> it's curious because uh, as we go on in time, we, we come up with new gadgets to, to thrill us. And uh, when I was a little child, my father was a radio dance band singer. So I, I, I sort of, you know, he kind of lived on the radio as far as I was concerned see some of the time and I got in a whole world of trouble when I first came to America for singing a song about radio <laughs> and uh, so I thought what can I sing for you today is because you got this I, I, I you know Apple radio thing going on today and I thought what about I went back to the way I originally wrote this song because when I before I got into show business I thought radio was great and I wrote a song all about celebrating it the dream of listening late at night and I, I, might, I kind of, this was my imaginary song about radio before I found out how foul and twisted it was. <laughs> of course, it's, it's, we've, we've set that right now, today. Uh, but I thought maybe, you recognize some of this song, but I thought I'd sing this for you, just uh, for a bit of fun, you know? You gotta imagine I was sitting in my, uh, in my little kitchen, waiting for my voice to come out of the radio. 
I was going to wait a long time because I hadn't made a record. <laughs> I was tuning in the shine and the light and I dialed on the front of my radio. When a man said there's nothing in the news today except trouble, then we all know. One thing we got too much of It's trouble as you know that's true What we need is a little music So we're here to entertain you I was just a little wrecked about Four in the morning With my head and my heart busted in With every one of those late night stations Playing songs breaking Turn you to sin I was seriously thinking about Hiding the receiver when the switch broke Cause it's old And a voice inside me said Are you a believer? This is your radio soul Radio soul It's a sad salvation Running down the airways Clean across the nation Don't get confused By the rhythm and blues And cold to the rock and roll It's in all day, all night All right, station I believe in Radio Soul Sha-la-la-la-la-la-la Sha-la-la-la-la-la-la-la Young girl dressed up Looks so pretty in her Dancing shoes and a fancy skirt But when they play those sad old songs Shit really, really hurts It was a broken jukebox Crooked lukewarm night When I went following that shuffling sound And the wind don't chill It sort of creep up and bite you When you least of all want it around Radio talking about losers and winners, but I don't talk at all. And the TV is talking about the cheaters and the sinners, so I know who I will call. Well, the boy boys are rushing because it's early evening and there's still a whole night ahead. But everybody else is well overwhelmed by the difference of a promise of an early bed. But for myself, I don't worry too much, least not since I was told. I could sail away to the songs that play upon my radio soul, radio soul. It's a sound salvation. Down the airwaves, clean across the nation. Don't get confused by the rhythm and blues and cold to the rock and roll. It's in all night, all right, all right, station. If you want to sit down, it's a relaxation. If you want to stand up, it's an elevation. It's got all of the facts and the information. Said you don't need no hesitation for all of your friends and all of your relations. I believe to my radio soul. Sha la 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 la. Oh, sha la 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 la. Elvis Costello. Yeah, one more. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you were all getting up to dance. <laughs> that could be the next app, couldn't it? It could be like uh, like iPad Twister, you know, like uh, so uh I got, I'm going to do this song. It's, uh, how'd you like to hear a new song? Would you like to hear a new song? Yeah. Yeah. This is, uh, and I never ever played this before in public, and, uh, and this is from a record that I, we're just about to release next week. See, I've, I've got product announcements too. <laughs> um, we got, <laughs> me, and, uh, me and the Roots, you know, the Roots, uh, we've made a record called Wise Up Ghost, 
And it's been a beautiful thing. In fact, some of it was rec- some of one of the vocals was recorded on, on my iPad in my kitchen. Uh, we, we use every method uh, imaginable, but we've had a, a ball making it, and we hope you like it. And uh, this is a, a ballad that you can play with a band, but I'll see if I can play it for you right now. And it's a, a, little, uh, a, little, a little sad song to end on, I know, but, but a true one. Just because I don't speak the language Doesn't mean that I can't understand The twist and the script of an insult Scrawled on the back of your hand Torn from the pages of scripture Spread on the wall or the frizz of the flag Kisses forbidden on lips And all of your fine clothes Blown into rags Tripwire There's a tripwire Don't open the door Cause they're coming Don't open the door Cause they're here Above there's an ominous humming Below there's a murmur of prayer Torn from the pages of scandal Sprayed on the wall or the phrase of flag Kisses forbidden on lips And all of your fine clothes blown into rags Tripwire Tripwire, tripwire, tripwire. There's a tripwire, there's a tripwire, there's a tripwire, tripwire. There's a cross on the line of the circuit. There's a voice that you might overhear. There's a lens making their picture perfect They say you have nothing to fear On on the saddle of the sand Sprayed on the wall of the phrase of the flag Far, far away there's a target And the sound of an army just starting to march Tripwire, 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 tripwire There's a tripwire There's a tripwire Just because I don't speak the language doesn't mean that I'm blind to the threat Though I thought there was more to forgiveness Than all we conveniently forget Torn from the pages of history Repeated again and again and again and again You're either for or against us and that is how the hatred begins. Trip wire, 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 trip wire. Of ghosts that's called Tripwire. Elvis Costello! You are terrific. Thank you very much for coming. We've got the iPhone 5C and the iPhone 5S across the hall so you can get your hands right on it if you're in the media. I'd like to thank everybody for coming, and don't forget the store in Palo Alto. (laughs) See ya. (laughs) 